How about this scenario? You're having a problem with your computer. Your law firm hires a computer repair guy to come in. And now, during the course of fixing your computer, you start chatting with him, making small talk. And you ask him how he's doing. He says, I'm doing terrible. And of course, you say, what happened? Next thing you know, you learn that his dad died of a massive blood clot to his lungs. He went into the hospital in New York City for a kidney procedure that went well, but two days later, he died. And now, they learn from the autopsy his dad died from this massive blood clot. And the son, who's fixing your computer, says to himself, I don't understand. Dad was on blood thinners to prevent this from happening. Why did he die? So again, now there's a suggestion. You don't know this guy, but he's fixing your computer. And now the question, even though if you do bankruptcy, transactional work, whatever you do, question should be going off in your head, how can you possibly help this gentleman and his family? How about this scenario? You handle trust and estates. A client comes to you to probate the will. And you ask, how did this person die? And the wife tells you a story about how her husband bled to death. She comes home one day from lunch. She walks into the house. She sees trails of blood leading to the bathroom. She finds her husband on the floor. There's blood on the ceilings, on the walls. And you're thinking, oh my god. And she tells you, they call the police, they think it's a murder scene until an autopsy is done and the medical examiner determines that the husband died because the shunt, as part of his dialysis treatment, ruptured and he bled to death. And now you're listening to the story about probating this will and you're thinking, maybe there's a case against the dialysis center. What do you do? How about this scenario? You're called to the hospital to prepare a last will and testament for someone who is dying. You arrive at the hospital and you learn that the person who's dying is a 40-year-old woman who's diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. And you're talking to her and her husband. She's got two beautiful children. And you learn that two years earlier, she had made a complaint of a lump in her breast to her gynecologist. And her gynecologist looked at it, said, don't worry, it's fine, it's just a cyst. We'll follow it on a yearly basis. Now, a year goes by. They both forget about it. The lump goes down. A year passes. Now the lump recurs. Now the gynecologist sends her out for testing. Biopsy reveals metastatic breast cancer, stage four. And now they're angry. The husband's furious. What do you do? You're there as a trust and estates attorney trying to prepare a last will and testament for some woman who's dying. And you're saying, I don't handle medical malpractice. But what can you do to help solve their problem? Because they've got a big problem. And the reality is they may have a valid medical malpractice case for failure to diagnose breast cancer. And if you don't know the information that I'm going to share with you shortly, you're going to be at a significant disadvantage in being able to help this family and this client. And I'm going to tell you right now that you don't have an ethical obligation to help these people. You don't have a moral obligation. But I'm going to suggest to you that you have a humanitarian obligation to help these people. And I will tell you that by helping these people, you are doing a great service to yourself and obviously to your client because they're in need of help. And if you have the right information to help them understand how these cases work, even though you don't do these cases, all of a sudden you now look as the resource for this potential client. And a great resource, because now you're the one who's able to help them, even though it's not your subject matter that you handle on a day-to-day -day basis.